We all looking at reaction after an almost unprecedented cabinet reshuffle uh, by President Jacob Zuma last night. Now, reaction has been varied and wide ranging here in uh, South Africa. Of course, uh, many people have their views on what the president did uh, last night. Of course, uh, the finance ministry has been the focus of uh, this reshuffle, but there were 10 changes and 10 changes to the deputy ministers as well. So an unprecedented one. I'm here with Mr. Dennis George, who's the General uh, Secretary of the Federation of Unions of South Africa for do so. Very good morning to you, Mr. George. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Let's start with your reaction to the late night reshuffle of the cabinet. Yeah, no, this reshuffle, a person must just take it back to Sunday evening. Mm. We, we were on our way to London as a team South Africa between business, labor and government. Mm. And then this whole trip was cancelled and the minister was recalled. And what is quite sad for us to see the humiliation in this whole process. And, and I also saw at the funeral of Uncle, Uncle Cathy, you know, that the mm. minister did shed a tear because I think of the pressure that it's been under since he has been appointed, you mm. know, um, as minister of finance because he wasn't the president's first choice. Yeah. And um, in that whole process, you know, he was under attack continuously by the Hawks, mm. by the stormtroopers of the president, you know, call him a, a representative of monopoly uh, capital, white capital, and all these things. But I think through all of this, the minister did a good job. He brought the social partners together mm. to work together to deal with unemployment and poverty in our country. And now this... this um, the whole thing about this shuffle, and it's a big, mm. a big issue, is going to definitely damage the credibility. Mm. It's going to damage the, 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 the rand. I mean, we've looked on Monday, it was 12 rand 20. Yeah. It's standing in 13 rand 60, and it's, it's lost, climbing. It's lost about 5% already. I'm telling you, workers' pension funds money yeah. is now going to be severely affected. Workers' pensions, you say? Yes, the pension fund. We know when Minister Nene mm. was replaced, it was 550 billion rands of pension fund value that, that was, was destroyed. wiped off. Yeah. It was wiped off, you know. So when a president makes a decision, you must make a decision mm. in the best interest of the country, and you must also make the decision in terms of what is the best for the economy. Mm. And this decision was made irresponsibly. I wanted to talk to you, because you've been in contact with uh, the now former finance minister. You've been traveling with him in the last week or so. Just give us an idea. Uh, where is Pravin Gordon at now? And uh, have you had any discussions with him about what the future might hold? Yes, look, I spoke to the minister last night at about our past 11. Mm. Um, look, I could... You know, any person would be disappointed. Mm. But I think the biggest disappointment is how his own organization, the ANC, treated him. And he was always there for many, many years to stand up for the ANC. He's a man of integrity. He's a man of values. He will not allow anything to happen to our fiscus if it's not in the best interest. And because of the values that he's standing for, mm. that's the reason why he was removed. And the same with Minister Jonas. You know, Minister Jonas is a man of integrity. You know, it's a man that understands what was good mm. for our country. They took a stand, they went to court, they used the processes, but because of all the things that they stood for, I think that was the reason why they were removed. What do you think will happen now with regards to uh, ratings, agency threats, and all these kinds of things that we see? And what effect do you think all this will have on the working classes in South Africa? Look, the impact on the working classes is going to be severe. Already we have about, you know, 9 million people that is not working. Mm. We've got about 13 million people that is dependent on social grounds every month. We saw the big balls of that happen now pre a, a month ago where the Constitutional Court had to come in. But those ministers keep their jobs, you see. And that is why we say we need ethical and competent leadership to guide our country. But going forward, mm. between now and December month, when the ANC is going to have the elective conference, mm. It's going to be difficult because the campaigns is going to be intensifying. It's going to drive away investors because, you know, people are looking now at my interests, not yeah. at the interests of the country. And so the situation is going to be on hold. Uh, things are going to be tough. But, I mean, from our side as FEDUSA, we want to work with government, but government has to listen. You see, if they don't listen and they do what they want to do, yeah. um, unfortunately, the country is going to suffer. In conclusion, there was this whole, th you were uh, overseas at the time with the delegation when, of course, the, uh, the recall happened from the uh, investor tour, let's call it that, 
you were you were with there. There was there was uh, a supposed intelligence report. What, 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 did you hear anything about this? Look, I mean, I've been on these delegations already. You know, for many times to divorce, we went to um, Washington, we went to New York. None of the people, I can give you a check, mm. is in any way involved. Personally, myself, mm. I'm willing to die for my country about something of regime change and stuff. It just hoax. Finally, the man in the hot seat now, the new finance minister, Melissa Gigaba from Home Affairs. How do you view that appointment as for Dusa? Look, I think, you know, the minister has been at a couple of portfolios. If you look how he handled the previous issue with regard to tourism and what impact that is, you know, I'm a bit concerned because he seems to be a kind of a stubborn person that doesn't listen. And that you saw that the tourism numbers were badly affected when he, and until the deputy president stepped in. And yeah. we then managed to sort that problem out. So if he's not going to listen to the social partners, you know, I'm not too sure about the future. Mr. George, I thank you for coming in today. That's the General Secretary of FEDUSA. That's the Federation of Unions of South Africa giving us their views with regards to the Cabinet reshuffle. Thank you once again, sir. Well, we're going to take a short commercial break. When we come back, top of the hour, that's at 10 o'clock Central African time, we'll give you, well, more reaction from around the country as well as more analysis uh, as to what is a landmark day for South Africa. Don't go away. <laughs>